Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about 80 years of vintage lipstick colors and trends. So I did some research and found different lipstick colors that people would have worn for that decade. And some of them are modern lipsticks that are dupes and some of them are actual vintage shades from that time period. So let's jump right in and start with the 1920s and go through every decade. While makeup trends fluctuate from season to season and even month to month, there is an unmistakable trend that is apparent in each decade. Popular lipstick shades have frequently been influenced by cultural climates, historical events, periods in which women felt free and liberated or oppressed. So I'm gonna go through each decade and highlight the popular lipstick trends from that decade and also talk about some of the global events that were occurring in that decade. So in the 1920s, Clara Bow, the silver screen a mega muse, was a significant beauty icon for the 1920s and the flapper culture. A deep berry tone lipstick was necessary to recreate Clara Bow's signature exaggerated Cupid's bow shape. During the 1920s, women were beginning to emancipate themselves, granting them the ability to express themselves freely. Makeup developed into a novel and exciting medium, and in the 1920s, women would use lipstick as a self-expression and a form of liberation. Even as smoky eyes began to soften, this punctuated Clara Bow-inspired lip shape remained a decade-long staple. And going into the 1930s now, the iconic rosebud-shaped mouth was the preferred lip shape in the 1930s. The trend demanded a slightly overdrawn top lip that flattened with the cupid's bow and rounded out the mouth corners to create a lengthened long bow shape. Joan Crawford was the poster girl for this lip shape. And the time period's preferred shades included deep reds, maroons, and raspberry tones. In the 1930s, the stock market crash and subsequent depression fueled a desire for rules and structure in society, and beauty standards followed this. Hollywood became obsessed with symmetry, and the faces of the time were meticulously shaped and sculpted with cosmetics to achieve this new aesthetic. And moving into the 1940s now, World War II altered everything. Women adopted a more practical attitude towards their lips. Outlining the natural lip shape became fashionable and filling it in with a bold patriotic shade of cherry red became another way to show support for the troops. And the red lipstick shade was worn to boost morale. Additionally, in the 1940s, women expected to roll up their sleeves and take on jobs previously dominated by men. Additionally, due to cosmetic rationing during the war, many women used lipstick as blush and continued to add petroleum jelly to their lipstick for a touch of shine. A plump, full lip with accentuated peaks on the upper lip was the desired shape. The color choice was a saturated orange-red, but lighter shades of coral and pink were also popular in the 1940s. And moving into the 1950s. The 1950s were a decadent era obsessed with cosmetic decadence and enhanced perfection. Each season and time of the day had a perfect lip shade. A woman had a lipstick wardrobe that prepared them for anything. If you mention the color 50s red, even makeup artists will immediately recognize it. That's the perfect orangey red that looks amazing on everyone. Technology and innovation were sweeping the globe, and a new form of entertainment was exerting unprecedented influence on beauty trends. Television became a fixture in the middle class homes, and shows like Leave it to Beaver, which depicted women as happy homemakers on a consistent basis. And this established a new archetype for female beauty. Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, and Sophia Loren were also hugely influential beauty icons during this time period. And moving into the 1960s, pastel sherbet shades were popular, mod pale pink, peach or nude lipsticks with a matte finish were all the rage, and a far cry from the classic red shades of the previous decades. The youthful and rebellious spirit of this era's makeup trends was both innovative and enticing. It was an exciting period in the history of makeup artistry. The 1950s conformity was a thing of the past and valuing one's uniqueness became more important. Makeup was unquestionably a form of self-expression embraced by youth culture. It is the first decade with a sizable working teenage population, which has elevated them to the new level of prominence in the world of beauty marketing. 
The teen dream was in full swing and young British musicians and models dominated the fashion and beauty worlds. Think Jean Shrimpton, Twiggy, The Supremes, and Brigitte Bardot all had mesmerizing eye looks and pale peach pouts during this era. And moving on to the 1970s. And so moving on into the 1970s, gloss defined this era, whether worn alone or as a finishing touch to a bold disco ready statement look. The 1970s beauty trends were as varied as the music in the era. This was the birth of the beauty subculture such as disco, punk, glam rock, hippie, and beach babe. In the 1970s, feminism and women's liberation were significant social movements affecting women. And this new awakening necessitated that the beauty industry offer something new. Along with the frost, glitter, and highly pigmented options, soft, more natural makeup options were also created. And beauty icons from this decade were Farrah Fawcett, Diana Ross, Jerry Hall, Bianca Jagger, and Laura Hutton. And moving into the 1980s now, the 1980s were the decade when lip color was truly resurfaced. Women experimented with a wide variety of shades, but blue-based pinks and magentas were the go-tos. Icons such as Grace Jones, Cyndi Lauper, Madonna were among the main icons of the 80s. The 1980s were a decade of excess. The world was filled with champagne wishes and caviar fantasies, and the fashion and beauty industries reflected this. Bold shoulder pads, puffy sleeves, massive hair, and bold makeup were all essentials. The 1980s beauty slogan could easily have been no feature overlooked. The most popular beauty looks required every facial feature to be boldly touched by makeup. MTV's inception had a profound effect on beauty and fashion culture, and the 1970s subcultures gained popularity as rock, soul, punk, and pop idols emerged. And lastly is the 1990s, and a muted color palette defined the 1990s lips. With deep mauves, red browns, and slate colored lipsticks paired with a matte skin and gloss. Frequently, lips were heavily lined in darker shade than lipstick. The overlining gave the lips a defined, contoured style. There was an unavoidable backlash against the decadence of the 80s, and a sleek, modern aesthetic emerged as the new trend. The power influencers of the time were musicians and television stars who paired these muted lip shades with thin brows, reminiscent of the 1930s. Demi Moore, Drew Barrymore, Naomi Campbell, Winona Ryder were some of the few 90s beauty icons that popularized these makeup trends. So now that we've talked about each decade, I'm going to go ahead and try on some lipsticks for each decade so you can get an idea of the type of colors that people wore in these decades. All right, let's jump right into that. All right, so let's start with the 1920s. So this one is a L'Oreal shade in Blushing Berry 590. I'll link all the shades below too that I used. And this is kind of, this would be considered a dupe, so it's actually not a shade from the 20s, but if you're trying to get that look, this one would be a good one. And this is a very subtle one. In my opinion, it even could double as a 1990 shade. It actually goes on really nice and it's a really nice creamy look too. I quite like it. And the next shade is Black Cherry by Revlon. This is a really dark shade, but definitely has that 1920s look and it's very dark. It's funny when I look at it, it's not something I probably wanna wear like during the day or everyday thing, but if you kind of want that vampy look, I think it would be good for like evening. Or you kind of just want something dramatic, but yeah, it's really dark. I'm like quite shocked by how dark it is. And this one looks a little bit lighter, not as extreme as that other red one. I actually really like this one the best. It's a really nice berry shade. And it's not as severe, but I feel like this is a nice 1920s one. I really like this one. It's pretty good. So, and this one's pretty affordable too. I think Wet n Wild lipsticks are like $3, so. This is a good one. It actually goes on really nice too. I'm pretty impressed by that. And now we have two Besame ones. This one is Blood Red, which is just a 1920s one. So it'll be interesting to compare these. I always find Besame's goes on so rough. 
This one, and again, is very dark. It'll be interesting when I actually swatch these on my arm so we can see the difference between all of them. But again, the Besame ones are really hard to get off. At least I find them difficult and they're more difficult to apply. I might even actually have to put a little bit of Pond's cold cream to get this one off. All right, and we have one Besame one left and this one is Forever Red. This one looks a lot more red than kind of the other ones. Yeah, this one could even double as like a 30s shade. I actually find that the lipstick goes on smoother when you have a little bit of pawns on your lips. This is a nice 1920s red. I like this one. It's like a deep red. I think this one is one of my favorites. I noticed it went on a lot smoother than the other one. Okay, so let's start out with the 1920s. So let's do the Blushing Berry by L'Oreal first. And next is the Revlon Black Cherry. As you can see, it's a lot darker than the L'Oreal. And then we got the Wet n Wild blind date it's more of a pinky undertone like raspberry and then we have besame blood red this one's quite dark and then we have forever red by besame So these are my 1920s dupes and now let's move on to the next decade. So now moving into the 1930s, I have a hot red. This one is by Wet n Wild and it looks more of like a pinky red. In the 1930s, like orangey red and kind of like a pink raspberry were popular and this one's really nice. It's a really nice pink raspberry shade. I like this one. I think it's really pretty and it's very versatile. It's not too severe. I think it would look good on a lot of skin tones. So this is a hot red by Wet n Wild. And the next 1930 shade, this one is Electric Orange, which is like a really orangey shade, but this shade was popular in the 30s. It's hard to actually think that because everything was in black and white and you just wouldn't expect. And I really like Maybelline lipsticks. They go on so smooth. This is a nice color too. It's not like a severe orange, like that Besame Marilyn one. It's like a nice orange. I feel like it's flattering on a lot of tones too. I like it. It's really nice. I, I don't mind this one. It looks so orange here, but when it's on my lips, it's actually not that extreme. All right, moving into the 1930s. So we have Electric Orange by Maybelline. This is a really bright orange. Then we have Hot Red by Wet n Wild. And this is like a nice pink red for the 1930s. And moving on to the next decade now. So in the 1940s, like orangey reds were popular. I think Lady Danger is a good knockoff for the 1940s. And I don't mind this one. It's a very popular lipstick. MAC lipsticks are strange. I guess they are very pigmented, but not too satiny. It's not bad. This is like, I think this is like one of the best selling lipsticks shades. So this is Lady Danger, it's a good 1940s dupe. And now I'm gonna do the Besame, and this is American Beauty, which is another 1940s shade. All right, so let's try American Beauty. This one looks very deep, dark red. This is a really nice shade. I've actually never tried this one on before. Maybe I have, and I just can't remember. It's very pigmented. It's a unique, it's kind of raspberry, but red, I don't know. I like it, it's really pretty. 
I like it. This is the American Beauty by Besame. I think I like it better than the Lady Danger. And moving into the 1940s, the first one we have is the Lady Danger by MAC. And this is like a really bright orange red. And then we have the Besame American Beauty, which is very pink and raspberry now that I look at it. It's funny, it looks so different on my lips. Interesting. Even on the tube, when it's coming out, it looks different. That's so weird. So this is the 1940s. So for the 1950s, all of these shades were actually available in the 50s. So they're all Revlon shades. And the first one is Cherries in the Snow. I think this one's supposed to be similar to the American Beauty in that it's kind of like a pink red. I've always liked Cherries in the Snow different than the American Beauty. It's like, it's almost a pink, like a dark raspberry. It's nice. I like this shade. And this is a 1950s one. So classic. And the next Revlon is Love That Red. It's another classic. This one's like a very 1950s red. Marilyn Monroe. I love this one. I like this one too. This is nice. The Revlon's just going so smooth. Such a classic shade. I feel like this is flattering on all skin tones too. It really is a perfect red. And next we have Love That Pink. And this is another 1950s shade. I really like this one too. This reminds me of like a nice 1950s like daytime lipstick. It's a really nice pink. It's quite versatile. It's like kind of salmon-y. I don't know. I've never seen one like this. I like this one. This one's good too. I like all these red ones. I feel like if you want like a nice lipstick collection, you should just buy all the Revlon shades from the 50s. And the next one is a Persian Melon. And this is really bright pink 1950s shade. Yeah, this one's a really fun kind of electric pink and it's interesting to think that this was a popular shade in the 50s. I like this shade too. This is a fun like pink daytime. It's very happy. So that's another Revlon. And we have one more Revlon and this is another classic. This is a more of an orangey red. And this one is Fire and Ice. And again, this is another really nice 1950s red. It's a bit different than Cherries in the Snow. It's a bit more orange than Love That Red too. But I really like it, it's nice and classic. So again, I always love the Revlons. I think they're great and affordable and easy to apply. And moving into the 1950s now with all the Revlon shades. The first one is Love That Red. That's a really nice shade. Then we got Love That Pink. I love this one. Kind of similar to Love That Red, just more pinky. Then we got Persian Melon. This one's nice too, it's a really nice electric pink. And then we got Cherries in the Snow. This one kind of reminds me of American Beauty. And lastly, Fire and Ice. It's a nice shade too. So that is it for all the 1950s Revlon shades. So I have a few 1960s shades here. The first one is Portrait Pink by Besame. And this is a nice pale pink shade. And as you can see, this is a really nice pale 1960s pink. I really like this one. It's kind of matte, except unfortunately I pushed too hard and I wrecked it. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fix that. I'm surprised it did that. But I do like the Portrait Pink by Besame. And the next one, this is called Baby Pink. And this is uh, Elizabeth Arden and Jackie Kennedy. I love this shade. I think it's pretty. 
think it's gonna be similar to portrait pink. This is a really pretty shade. I like the Elizabeth Arden ones. Actually, they're another one of my favorite lipstick brands because I find that they just have a really nice satin finish. My lips feel so moisturized now, like glossy, and it just goes on so nice and smooth. So that is Elizabeth Arden Baby Pink. So the first one is called Pink and Proper, and this is Maybelline. And it's like a really nice pink 1960s. This one's fun because it's really frosted. And I love that frosted look from the 1960s. Yeah, this is a really fun shade. Especially if you want that frosted look, I like this one. And it goes on smooth too. It's so frosted, that's cool. And this is Enchantress Blush and this is CoverGirl. And this one's very frosted, you can tell just by looking at it. What a wild frosted shade, that's crazy. It's super frosted. It's like as frosted as you can get, the 1960s. That's cool. And it's very matte and pale pink. You can almost combine some of these two if you put like a little bit of this on top of a different one. But yeah, this is a fun frosted color. And moving into the 60s, so the first one is the Besame Portrait Pink. Just a nice pink shade. Then we got Jackie Kennedy's shade, Baby Pink by Elizabeth Arden. This one's nice and subtle. Nice sheen to it. And then we got Pink and Proper by Maybelline. This one's more of a frosted pink. And then we got the Enchantress Blush by CoverGirl. And this one is really frosted. Look at that. I don't know why I'm like mesmerized by this one. So that is it for 1960s colors. All right, let's do the 1970s. So the first one is a Maybelline and this is Plum Paradise. And here is kind of as a metallic-y look. This one's really nice actually. It's very subtle and it has that nice sheen to it. And I'm moisturizing and it kind of has that metallic look again. This is a good 1970s shade. And this is the Farrah Fawcett one. And this one was designed after Farrah Fawcett and it's called Farrah and it's Nude Envy. And it's a really nice pink. It actually kind of reminds me of some of the 60s shades. Yeah, it's like a nice subtle frosted pink shade. I remember in photos you could see Farrah wearing this kind of shade too. And moving into the 70s, the first one is the Farrah Fawcett shade, which does kind of remind me of the 60s. This one's so subtle, it's hard to even... It's funny, the only stains that got left behind on my arms are from the Besame lipsticks, they just don't want to come off. And then we got the Plum Paradise by Maybelline. This is more of like the alternative 70s look. So these are the two 70s shades. So for the 1980s, I have this Taboo shade. This is actually a really old brand, but it's that nice, bright fuchsia. For some reason, this color reminds me of like Joan Collins or something. And it's a really fun, I think I got this one at the Vermont Country Store. Such a fun color, definitely 1980s. I like the sheen to it too. It goes on really nice, so that's taboo. And moving into the 80s, we got this fun taboo fuchsia shade, which I like, it's fun. It has a nice sheen to it. It's a nice fuchsia. And lastly, moving into the 90s, I feel like my arm is swatched out. We've got the brick one selena's favorite color that's nice i like this one 
And then we got the Revlon Toast of New York, which is another good 90 shade. So you can see it's a lot more brown than the brick. And that is it for the 90s now. So I have the Toast of New York, which is a super popular shade in the 90s. And again, this is the Revlon one. This is actually a decent shade. It definitely has that 90s look, but I really like it. It's not bad. I feel like it would be flattering on a lot of skin tones and it's subtle for the day. I don't normally gravitate towards like the 1990s for some reason, but I like this one. This is a good one. So this is Toast in New York. It looks a lot different on than it does in the two, but I know it's different for every skin tone. And next we have another Elizabeth Arden one. It's like a darker matte shade and this is Brick 02. Actually, I think Selena liked the, this one that I'm about to try on. Yeah, this is another really nice 1990s shade. It's similar to Toast of New York, but it's a little bit more red, but it definitely has that 90s look. I can see why Selena would like this. It's nice. It's funny, when I look at it here, it looks matte for some reason, but when I put it on, it has like a lot of nice sheen. I love Elizabeth Arden lipsticks. I think they're better than Besame, in my opinion. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know which decade is your favorite. And if you like these type of videos, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the big red button below. And thank you to all my members who have joined in the last month and supported me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see more of you guys on my membership. All right. See you guys again soon. Bye.